Thanks for tuning in to Talking Point. I'm your host, Nidhat Shah. The question today to our expert would be whether Riscon is back with a bang or will he be a bit more tempered? It's important coming from him since he's one of the largest, if not the largest, portfolio manager in the country. Pratik Agarwal of ASK Investment Managers joins us right now on the show. Pratik, good having you. Thanks for joining in. Hope all is safe. All is good. Hope Great. all is good at your end. That's what Pratik, all safe thus far. So Pratik, what do you make of uh, the market sentiment after yesterday's announcement? Uh, do you reckon that this is a pivotal moment and maybe things could change and be different from what we have seen in the last 6 to 9 to 12 odd months? Uh, well, uh, to the extent that there was uh, a flight towards conservativeness, uh, I think that will change a bit. However, if you see the movement uh, over the last few months, uh, you know, already people were beginning to take risks as the economy was normalizing. Uh, the last bit uh, which had not functioned well was financials and, uh, you know, over the last two weeks or so, even that part was starting to come back after the results uh, happened and the fear of NPAs which was there, uh, I, I really thought was being addressed very well. So that happens, you know, uh, the global markets, uh, you know, we uh, barely have tech, uh, you know, barring, let's say, a reliance which got positioned as tech in India, uh, in the indices. So the big move is uh, maybe uh, to take some money off the table uh, from tech and uh, more discretionaries and uh, financials, uh, since we have so little of uh, uh, tech, uh, you know, barring that one name, in the indices, uh, you know, where from uh, do we uh, move monies? So yes, uh, to some extent, I would believe, uh, you know, uh, staples, consumers, uh, the, the conservative part uh, there may be some amount of uh, money being taken away for, let's say, uh, uh, financials and discretionaries. I think the discretionaries would have uh, some of the the discretionaries would have some of the bombed out uh, spaces as well, right? Uh, hotels, aviation, uh, restaurants, dining in, out, etc. Uh, we saw that in the U.S. markets as well in trade yesterday that some of the aviation names, etc. went up. Now, the point, point I'm trying to actually understand from you is that the argument that comes up whenever somebody would make this point is that the vaccine might be months away, a few months away, 9 to 12 months away from India. Uh, do you think sentiment alone could buoy up these very beaten down pockets because luxury travel may have started, uh, important travel may have already started and therefore uh, premium hotels, aviation etc might anyways be benefiting and the valuations may have been very depressed. Would you think of those pockets at all? Uh, short answer, no. Uh, uh, the vaccine will take longer to come to India. What got announced uh, yesterday night uh, is something which I don't believe can happen to India given that uh, you know, to store that we need minus 70 kind of a uh, storage. Uh, we don't have uh, those kind of cold chains. So uh, we will have to wait for uh, other vaccines, uh, you know, to happen. So uh, not so positive for India just yet. But then, you know, all of these candidates were neck to neck with each other. So if one has done, uh, one is already uh, close to getting launched, let's say end of December, early Jan. Others should not be uh, far behind. Uh, but that said, uh, it will take time for things to happen for India. Now, luxury hotels, etc. Yes, I do understand that people, uh, you know, really want to uh, go out, uh, you know, have a change versus uh, what they have been doing over last now eight nine months. Uh, but that said. Uh, you know, it will be uh, in spurts whether uh, the hotels will start to see over 50% occupancy near, near term looks uh, very difficult and international travel, you know, unless it is an absolute must, uh, I think it is still a long way off. So uh, similarly for, uh, you know, exhibition halls, anything which is mass entertainment, I think will take a lot more time to come back. 
Mm. Okay, fair point. Uh, what? Just one small uh, minutiae before we get to the larger points, Pradeep. The um, how do I say it? What about the retail chains? What about malls? What about the, that that pocket? Because that was not, in a sense, completely bombed out. Those pockets themselves, the companies are trying to set up their own digital channels as well. So there'll be a digital presence. Is there merit in trying to think of those? Because there are a lot less discretionary in nature compared to travel or you know holidaying for that matter. Yeah. So uh, you know. we have seen people go back to malls for example uh, the the uh, the markets around the houses are uh, now full you know there is no place to park your vehicle anymore so uh, that feels normal uh, for sure uh, i would say uh, there is some uh, positivity in the air uh, festivities are uh, helping the fact that all the festivals are in the same period uh, this year quarter 3 uh, definitely helps and if uh, you know all the crowds need to be taken care of then uh, all the manpower which was earlier engaged needs to be back as well uh, which then has its own uh, life in terms of incomes getting restored and then hence uh, spending is also getting restored so i am pretty hopeful on uh, that count uh i have seen uh, you know some bit of consumption uh, getting restored in quarter two results you know stuff like uh, tiles uh, akadaria reports just a 2% drop in volumes you know it's business as usual versus last year uh, many many categories uh, cement uh, pretty strong numbers on volumes you know margins so everybody reported very good margins but even on volumes so uh, i would say uh, rural india is doing well smaller towns are doing well cities may be a, a tad conservative as of now but uh, even they are uh, coming back uh, i would say in full stream everybody wants their uh, places to look good for the festivities yeah we've seen signs of that in home improvement for sure i mean i've just in my my society alone yeah. i've seen a number of houses trying to do that so that's that's that point is well taken okay now now to the broader question pratik uh, we we are back to highs uh, and doing rather well for ourselves uh, so to say and it's now being uh, the participation is almost across as you said financials were the last leg they have come back to and uh, does the how do you approach the markets then does the valuation picture versus the economic picture worry you or do you believe because the market is looking 6 months out growth numbers would compensate for the moves that we've had yeah, so i believe markets are with the economy you know when economy was down in quarter 1 markets were down as well when economy came back and we may get a minus 8% on the economy Uh, in quarter two, but quarter two results are out, and we should get a growth on uh, index EPS in quarter two. We started the quarter with a degrowth expectation, but I really thought the quarter was going uh, vastly better than uh, expected. In fact, this can end up as being the largest delta over expectation quarter in a long while. So, uh, if profits are there uh, uh, and higher than last year, same period, why should markets not be at least at the same period, if not higher? Is point one, and quarter three gets better. We all know uh, quarter three is feeling much better versus a plus minus one uh, kind of a GDP that one expected. Uh, it can be a tad better than that. Uh, the GST numbers point to that. In October, the electricity demand was 10% higher. Uh, the railway freight movements are higher, and so on. Uh, so it feels that way. Uh, let's see how the numbers come in for uh, the third quarter uh, GDP. And of course, if second quarter uh, profits were what they were, quarter three numbers will be even better. so why should markets not be at the same levels or higher and which is what we are actually seeing uh, secondly between last year same period and now interest rates are down uh, by let's say 0.75 to 1.5% depending on which rate you are looking at and this time around it is not the repo rates alone it's not the gsex uh, interest rates alone it is alone it is also the rates that you and me can borrow so housing uh, loans can be had for sub 7 uh, 
uh, now probably the lowest that we have ever seen uh, in this country and they may sustain so uh, you know lower yields lower interest rates do go a long way in uh, discounting future profits to the present uh, uh, higher uh, you know so the npvs would be higher versus last year and i think that gives the market some room to uh, uh, do better you know so i actually see some upside from where we are i am not uh, in the camp which says uh, market has moved up uh, faster than the economic rebound actually don't look at the economy for the year and look at the market uh, at a moment look at the economy also at the same moment and then you will find both of them are actually moving quite well in sync okay um that's an interesting thought don't look at the economy for the year and the market at the moment look at both from the same glass or the same prism or the same perspective um in which case prati i'm just trying to understand do you think that the data flow or the or the print for the upcoming next four quarters might actually work in favor of the markets q3 as you said the anyways are looking good q4 the rbi has said that we will break into the black on the growth front and q1 and q2 of next year will have the advantage of the q1 and q2 base of the current financial year so therefore are we set for positive print for the next four quarters yes uh, very much so uh, you know that's uh, what i believe in for next four quarters uh, unless we really get a big accident on the way uh, something that we are not foreseeing just now uh, the print would be strong uh there would be positivity all around uh you know it's not only the base effect i think policy making has also been very favorable uh you know india is supposedly the last big game in the world is the largest uh, market after china one single market and now that market is giving you incentives to come and put up shop you know pli schemes have been announced uh, for electronics they are in on the works uh, we understand for chemicals they may be extended to various other sectors you know, imagine that uh, and then uh, for indian manufacturers you know that is what is represented on the markets the import duty protection has moved up uh, you know imports uh, you know uh, from let's say duty free countries uh, of asean are being uh, looked at more closely uh, people are having to certify that the value addition norms are being uh, adhered to and so on so uh, all of that is giving lot more market access to uh, manufacturers in the country and of course helped by uh, china plus 1 uh, buying uh, uh, change that we are seeing from global buyers so uh, in a variety of businesses that again is uh, providing a lot of support so you know uh, unless we goof up unless we meet with an accident that we can't see can't foresee just now i think it is uh, we are headed for good times okay in in which case pratik uh, where do you think uh, large money managers like you would put incremental cash to work would it be in the tried and tested bonds uh, which have performed thus far but the valuations might be stretched or would you go for value so uh, you know philosophically speaking we are high quality growth investor so we seek a combination of high quality and growth which we believe the long way towards preservation and growth of capital so we will stick to that uh, and i just shared our philosophy and our deliverable so that people understand the context in which i am saying so we will stay there uh, but that said uh, incremental monies or maybe the at the margin to week i do believe uh, we should be a, a tad lower uh, on let's say consumer staples uh, food kind of businesses uh a tad higher on uh, financials for example and maybe uh, discretionaries uh, on the consumer side so those are spaces which could do just a tad uh, better versus uh, the staples 
uh and you know uh, businesses like uh, inference i would really believe uh, you know, uh, people seek a bit more bit more you know, we are just talking margins of risk just now now that uh, there is a, a, a better confidence of things returning to normal if not over a quarter but almost definitely over the period of 6 to 9 months so that is uh, uh, what i believe will happen uh, now if you look at the financial space uh, you know as an index that space is still significantly below the levels uh, that we saw in december jan uh, of this year and uh, uh, mainly because of fear of uh, fear of npas uh that's a uh, unknown i think market's fear uh, it can be very high uh, policy makers have commented on the same our sense is uh, npas would be significantly lower uh, you know uh, the covid kind of a situation a quarter of not doing much uh, may have ballooned debt uh, by let's say 5 to 10% mainly on account of wages which may have had to be paid uh, while there was no production etc and some interest on interest but uh, you know a 10% higher uh, debt levels would definitely be serviceable you know by by a vast majority of uh, businesses except those who work on extremely thin margins uh, or for example somebody who has started a business just now uh, you know one second doesn't have so much of equity so uh, our sense always was uh, you know the fears are way more than uh, what would happen in reality i think uh, after quarter 2 we do believe uh, we are hearing something similar from the from the banks and lenders in general uh, so uh, that's a space where uh, the catch up uh, is there to be had uh, and i do believe uh, money managers like ourselves uh, would uh increase that allocation uh, going forward hmm. pratik i i i would request my producer to pull up that chart that we just showed uh, of banking and that tells you a story right that while financials may have come back the top two gainers are two of the highest perceived perception wise the highest quality banks in the country and then it's some of the others which are also perceived to be high so my question is in financials do you you know the psus but i'm just saying do you get tempted to park money into the ones which are uh, better on on a valuation metric simply just looking better or uh, do you stick to your philosophy even as you are rotating more into financials yeah no financials are a very different place you know uh, higher valuation there uh, help the business it helps the business and increases the competitive advantage over uh, somebody who is not able to raise money at the same valuation so if a bank is able to raise money or an nbfc is able to raise money at, at a four price to book for example versus somebody who is not even able to raise money at one price to book it is a sustaining competitive advantage that the first entity has over the second so uh, that is something uh, that we really uh, focus on uh, second uh you know in financials there is this value transfer which has been happening for a long while from not so good uh, financial entities uh, financial intermediaries to the significantly better ones be it public sector be it private sector so in public sector a state bank for example has not lost market share uh while practically everybody else may have in private sector uh, we have had lemons you know many of them uh, have been merged many of them uh, uh, had to be supported so you know let's not tend it uh, quality is rare we are talking of three to four names you know uh, in the whole space uh, which uh, are good on the banking side uh, you know three to four names which may be good on the nbfc Uh, side and uh, stay focused there okay um okay but think the the other uh, yeah other question that uh, really comes to mind is that uh, about about 6 to 9 not i do not 6 to 9 months maybe 18 months ago you had given me this fantastic rationale of why non lending financials uh, are a very interesting pocket 
and um, at that point of time we have spoken about insurance we have spoken about asset managers you already told us about insurance just a very small segue into asset managers we have three full fledged asset managers listed we have uh, one which is uh, a, we have a wealth manager listed we have one which is a mix of brokering broking and wealth management uh, asset management listed uh, but all of these are kind of um, you know struggling a little bit on the bourses uh, is the market uh, or is is this the is this the opportunity or is that the thesis may have just changed a little bit because preference may have risen for some of the others yeah sure so uh, if you are talking longer term trends we really believe in disintermediation so i spoke of a value transfer from uh, you know not so good lenders to better lenders but the other value transfer is from lenders to uh, you know fee based uh, financial entities both mutual funds and uh, insurance uh, and of course you know uh, asset allocators wealth managers etc so longer term uh, outlook is good as india gets richer uh, more money gets allocated into such risk assets versus uh, banks this intermediation happens and the long term nature of the theme just can't be denied uh, however uh, in the present uh, there have been a lot of regulatory changes uh, which the industry needs to digest over a period of time uh, that's one and second uh, what is also happening is that uh, you know the largest of players on the mutual fund side uh, are not seemingly gaining market share uh, you know uh, the smaller players who are actually not profitable uh, or barely profitable are the guys who are uh, really gaining uh market share so uh, that is again something which can continue for some time and the uh, market may need to digest that uh, however if you are taking a significantly longer uh, uh, point of view then uh, this is a space which is attractive uh, uh, the the two factors that i spoke about you know larger ones losing market share but having very good profitability uh versus smaller ones who are gaining market share but have very low profitability you know that needs to sort itself out uh, uh, in the interim okay i think my final question and that is on two pockets or three pockets which did really well in the last 6 months uh information technology uh pharmaceuticals and include api or what have you but the pharma space and specialty chemicals three pockets which did reasonably well in terms of business not just in terms of stock price performance but in terms of business in quarter 1 and quarter 2 uh, kind of coming off the seems because maybe the risk appetite for the others are moving up uh, what what are your views here no so specialty chemical we stay very positive uh, uh, you know there is this china plus 1 uh, buying behavior that we are witnessing everybody is talking of the same we believe it is reality we believe it will sustain uh we have uh, barely 3% of uh, the market share globally uh that's the increase that the world has in the chemical demand on a global basis if other parts of the world are not expanding capacities you know even without uh, uh, doing much we should be able to uh, expand ourselves uh, china plus one definitely helps uh, every company in this space is expanding capacity strongly as we speak so there is positivity there uh, yes it is a commodity uh, it will have uh, price swings etc uh, and uh, yes they have had a good run so they may consolidate for some time we should be aware of that but uh, overall for medium to long term i think uh, that's a positive uh, space uh, second pharmaceuticals uh, you know uh, let's split it uh, between uh, uh chronic guys and acute guys uh i think uh, uh, there are a few guys who are very focused on chronic therapies now chronic therapies uh actually keep doing uh, a slow steady growth uh, you know for a very very long period of time uh, you know they, these are lifestyle diseases uh, people staying more at home uh, makes it worse actually so if you look at uh, data till september while acute therapies had a degrowth the chronic ones had a growth uh, now i do believe in october both of them have a growth uh, 
so india pharmaceutical india market i think uh, continues to do uh, very well uh, for uh, pharma now on the export side i do believe covid has really improved the prospects of indian pharmaceuticals you know uh, the world took notice anything that needs to be mass produced uh, has a great probability of uh, happening in this country uh, it has been a good good advertisement for uh, our businesses uh the uh, businesses themselves have become more compliant over this period we have had uh, many more approvals rather than uh, you know fda warning uh, kind of uh, events so that again is a positive uh, so uh, uh, i think in terms of business uh, business momentum the space again sustains uh, but uh, on valuations maybe the easy money is more or less made and we could see some consolidation in this space you know mind you we are back at where we were uh, and if you dissect the market there are spaces which are significantly higher than where they were say period last year uh, versus now so there is uh, some bit uh, in this in the price for these uh, spaces so expect them to consolidate for some time uh, it services uh you know for them uh, once again i would believe uh, valuations may be an issue business momentum should continue to be strong as businesses are really focusing on digitization you know if i speak of our uh, own house you know we may have uh, uh, gone extremely cautious on every other expense except for uh, it you know whatever was work in progress we want that finished uh, as soon as possible so uh, i think that uh, momentum would be seen uh, by indian it services companies uh, for a few years going forward you know people really uh, now want to be ready uh, for such a event to again recur and be able to work uh, remotely pradeep special chatting with you always thanks so much for taking the time out to talking to us today more importantly after such a big news day and Uh, to you and everybody who's yours very happy diwali and a prosperous happy day. diwali to every listener thanks bye thanks prateek and viewers thanks for tuning in to this leg of talking point